and welcome back to the Cracking Fan YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 2178, maximum split of positive even integers. You are given an integer final sum. Split it into a sum of a maximum number of unique positive integers. Return a list of integers that represent a valid split containing a maximum number of integers. If no valid split exists for final sum, you may return an empty list and return the integers in any order. So let's look at some basic examples. And the first one we're going to start with is actually this one where final sum equals seven. So because seven is an odd number, there's actually no way to split this um, into like even numbers, right? We could split it with one and six. That doesn't work because one is not even, right? It has to be positive even integers. So we could do two and five. Again, that doesn't work because five is odd. Um, and then we could do four and three, but again, three is odd, so that doesn't work. So in this case, because final sum is actually an odd number, whenever we have an odd, we simply just return an empty list because it's not possible. Okay, let's look at 12, which is possible. So what are the possible splits we could do, right? We could with, you know, even numbers, because we've already established that we can't use odds. So we could do two and 10, that would work. We could do uh, two, four, so that would be six and then six. We could do four and eight, and that's the biggest, um, you know, splits we could do. Uh, and for our purposes, we can't use zero here. So obviously the most amount of numbers is gonna be this two, four, six. Remember, because we're trying to find the maximum number of unique positive integers in our result, so we return two, four, six. So basically we want to use the smallest numbers possible to build our result. So keeping that in mind, how can we basically build our solution? Well, let's think about it. So we looked at an example, but how do we actually solve this in a manner that, you know, we can actually codify? Well, remember that the first thing that we need to do is to check whether or not our number is actually even. If it's odd, then we can just return an empty list. We don't have to do anything there. If it's even, remember that we said we want to use the smallest numbers possible to build our result. So, you know, let's initialize our result and we'll just call it this list here and it's going to be, you know, an empty list in the beginning. And what we're going to do is we have to use even numbers, right? And the smallest even number available to us is going to be two, right? And we're going to keep track of our sum. So we're going to say that the current number is going to be two and our sum, which is going to represent how many, num you know, the sum of the numbers that we've added so far is going to be zero, right? We haven't done anything yet. So we start with two and we're going to put that into our list here and we're going to update our sum. So while our sum is actually less than 12, because obviously we don't want to go, you know, over it because we can't use negative numbers to bring us down. So we have to basically make sure that we don't go over our value here. So the sum is still less than, um, you know, 12. So that we're going to continue. Now the next uh, even number that we can use is going to be four. So basically we're going to be multiplying by two every time because we need to move to the next uh, even number. So what we're going to do is we're going to add four to our list here and we're going to update our sum, which is now six. And again, we're going to check is our sum less than 12? Yes, it is. So that means that we can go to the next one and sorry, we're not going to be multiplying by two each time. My bad, we're going to be adding two each time. So we're going to get to six. So we are now going to add six to our um, value here, uh, our list here, and then we're going to get uh, 12 as our sum. So now um, what we're going to do is we are, you know, at our sum. So, you know, we will basically just go one more. So we'll go eight and then we'll add, uh, you know, we'll add that to the array and we will see that our sum is 20 now and we have exceeded <coughs> are you know 12 so that means that we need to basically get rid of a number here because we've gone too far so our array is going to be two four six eight but obviously this value um is not right because you know we have too much here right we have a sum of 20. <clears throat> so what do we want to do obviously we want to get rid of um you know the value that pushed us over that threshold right because if we wanted to to get back to 12, we would need to get rid of, you know, more values. So we could get rid of, actually, can we even, the only number we can actually get rid of is this eight, or we could get rid of the six and the two, but obviously we want to maximize the number of values we have left. 
So if we get rid of the two and the six, we'd only have four and eight, which would not be as large as having two, four, and six. So that's the way we're just gonna get rid of this eight here. And that would be our final answer, right? So we get two, four, six, uh, and we'd be done. <clears throat> so we just need to make sure that we remove the number that actually pushed us over the threshold. And then at that point, we will be you know, good to return our solution. So, uh, you know, we need, just need to be careful to actually remove the number that would actually take us there. So for example, from, you know, 20, we need to get rid of eight. So we would want to remove eight from our solution. Um, you know, if we only needed to remove six, then we would just remove the six, right? We want to remove the exact number and you'll see how we're going to do that in the code editor, uh, in case it's not clear, but let's go there and we'll code this up. It's really not that many lines of code. It's actually a quite simple solution. So I'll see you in the editor. We're in the code editor. Let's write this up. Remember that we need a list, uh, for our final solution. So let's define that variable. So we're just going to say res is going to be an empty list. Now what we need to do is simply check whether or not our number here, final sum, is even. If it's not even, then we can't do anything, then we can just simply skip. So we're going to say if uh, final sum modulo 2, um, then we're just going to return res because we know that it's uh, odd and basically we can't do anything with that. So otherwise, <clears throat> remember that we need to keep track of our current sum. So we're going to say current sum is going to equal to 0. And our current number, remember, is going to be representing the current positive that we're going to be adding to our result. And we're going to start with two because that's the first positive integer, right? So we're going to say cur num is going to be two. And what we want to do now is what we want to, um, we just want to make sure that our sum is actually less than final sum while we go through our loop. So we're going to say while sum, oops, cur sum sum is less than uh, fine oops I did double M here uh, final sum what we're gonna do is we're going to add whatever the current number is to our current sum uh, oops keep calling it current uh, s so we're gonna say current sum we're gonna add the current number to it we're gonna add to our result the current um, number that we're working with so I'm gonna add that there and then we're going to increase the current number by two. So we're going to say current num plus equals to two. And we're going to run that while again, current sum is less than the final sum. Then what we want to do is just make sure that we have an overshot our final sum. So we're going to basically say if s equals to, why do I keep calling it s? If current sum equals to the final sum, then we're good. We ended exactly uh, at final sum. So we can simply just return our list. We don't need to actually do anything. Otherwise, if we went over, then we just need to remove the exact number that took us over, right? Remember in our example, uh, actually it was a bad example because we were at 12, we should have just stopped it there. I, I think I added the eight on accident. But anyway, if you think back to that example, we just need to get rid of that eight uh, that added us, added us there. So we're going to say res dot pop. So we need to remove the number that basically took us over, um, you know, the value uh, that we need. So we're going to say res dot index, we need to find the index of the value uh, that basically is pushing us over. So we're going to say cur sum minus the final sum. So that will give us the number uh, that we need to get rid of, we're going to find its index, and then we're going to pop it from the list. So we're going to do that and we're going to simply return the list at the end. So let me just run this, make sure I haven't named any variables incorrectly. Okay, cool. That seems to work and submit this and it works. Cool. So what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm here? Well, if you think about the time complexity, even though each time we multiply or we add two to our current sum and it basically keeps growing by two each time, <clears throat> the most time consuming part is actually going to be this part here, uh, where we're actually finding index and then popping it. Obviously, these are going to be big O of n operations. Um, so that is going to dominate our time complexity here. So it's going to be big O of n because we need to pop in the worst case, uh, and then find the index. So res dot index will take big O of n time. And then we'll also have to do res dot pop, which is going to be big O of n time. So that's going to be the time complexity of this algorithm. Space complexity wise, we need the result to actually compute, uh, you know, we need to return the result, right? So 
we shouldn't be counting this towards our space because we need to return a list, right? We can't get around that. So technically our space complexity is gonna be big O of one. Uh, and the reason for that is we haven't actually defined any other variables other than current sum and current num. Um, whereas, you know, res, we need this for the solution. So we're not gonna count it towards our space complexity because there's no way to do it without this. So uh, we don't have to count it towards our space complexity. So that is how you solve this problem. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it looks a lot easier once you see the code as opposed to like thinking about it. Uh, it looks like some crazy dynamic programming question, but it's really not. Anyway, that's how you solve this problem. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube, al YouTube algorithm. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.